there are about 2.6 million people in the UK who currently have diabetes. On top of that figure, there's an estimated half a million people walking around the UK who currently have diabetes but are completely unaware that they have the condition. Globally, it's a frightening figure. It's about 285 million people worldwide have diabetes. Diabetes currently accounts for about 10% of the entire NHS budget. And in real terms, that is £9 billion per annum. By understanding the disease process around diabetes, we can actually target areas that our partners and collaborators in industry might be able to develop therapies and treatments. We've been looking to try and understand what actually triggers the disease process in type 1 diabetes in children. We know quite a lot about what happens during the process once it's been initiated. What we don't understand is what initiates the process. And it's this area that we're focusing on, looking at the role of viral infection in triggering the disease process. We were the first people to actually establish a direct link to actually show virus present in the insulin-producing cells in patients with type 1 diabetes. These viral particles are not present in the pancreas of children who died of other diseases. It is specifically associated with type 1 diabetes. What we need to do is to narrow down the type of virus that is actually involved in the destructive process. If we can do that, we then have an opportunity to develop a vaccine against those viruses that we will be able to give to children before they are likely to develop diabetes. As research scientists, one of the things that is really important is actually communicating what we do to not only the patients with diabetes and their carers, but to the general public, obviously. And we, we actually received an invite to come and talk to our local diabetes support group. And so we went along to tell them about the research that we're doing. And it was during the course of this presentation that we were absolutely inundated with questions and queries about what we do and everything else. And a particular focus was the interest in reducing the number of animals in medical research. From a scientific point of view, animals don't always give scientists the most clinically reflective model for a disease that they're looking at. Traditionally, cells are grown in two dimensions. What we're trying to do is grow cells in three dimensions. Because if you imagine cells in the body, cells are all attached to other cells, they're embedded in an extracellular matrix which holds them together and allows them to communicate with each other. You don't get that communication when cells are grown flat. Now we use a microgravity system which was developed by NASA. This system allows us to culture cells for a long time in three dimensions without the use of animals. We go out and talk to patient groups, to lay people, to let them know what research is being done in their area. And also this is very important from our point of view to keep everything realistic. We need to make sure that we're relating this to people who have diabetes, who are living day to day with diabetes. I've been diabetic for 15 years now and it became apparent to me that there was the, the NHS is very under-resourced and uh, couldn't provide the kind of peer emotional support that I felt that I needed. Um, and as I've come to learn, a lot of other people have needed that as well. So um, since then, we've formed some age-specific activity as well, including 18 to 30s, um, and it's going fantastically. The research group have come to, to speak to the group um, about the work that they do, and also hear about um, diabetes from the user's perspective as well. So it's really nice that there is a two-way process. We hope that we can do some co-working with the research group um, to, to perhaps put some research behind the groups that we've set up. Um, I'd love, to, I'd love to, to get some research behind the 18 to 30s age group, you know, that sort of thing, um, to, um, to prove that this actually does work. What we've found is, um, just through personal anecdotes, is the outcome of kind of group work is it can tick so many boxes. Um, you know, the, the emotional peer support being one of those. I hope that the research group can help us to, to prove that this stuff works because um, I can say till I'm blue in the face that you know, this has helped me and this has helped, helped a load of my mates and, and give um, anecdotal evidence. What I can't do at the moment is prove it. What we're able to do as scientists is 
talk to the group about the possibility of actually measuring this improvement in diabetes control so we can see whether or not there is a tangible scientific positive outcome. From the moment I was diagnosed and certainly my, my parents as well the first question on my lips was well when is when's there going to be a cure? What's really encouraging for me is actually to see the, the development firsthand um, and you know from from looking at it in a little petri dish and thinking actually this could change my my entire life is quite mind-blowing um and you know so from that perspective it's really fascinating you know for a diabetic to kind of see that process develop the be all and end all for anybody involved in research into any disease but in particular in a disease like diabetes you want to find a cure if you can actually stop the disease before it happens then all the issues around living with complications and shortened lifespans and all these things just go away. The Holy Grail is finding a cure.